All right, so we're going to move on to sort of your general sleeping equipment. Um, this is sort of individual gear. So let's start with a closed, full length, closed cell foam pad for laying on top of the uh, snow in your tent. Um, this is just a thermal rest, thermal rest, ridge rest. And then you'll want your uh, inflatable. Um, lots of different brands here. This is just a basic, basic thermal rest um, uh, blow up mattress. Okay. And then you're going to need a warm sleeping bag, probably negative 20 to negative 40 degrees, sort of recommended. This is the Mountain Hardware Wrath. It goes down to negative 20. It's a warm bag. Um, it should be plenty uh, warm, uh, especially if we want to sleep in layers or something like that. So this is the Mountain Hardware Wrath. And then plus or minus, again, on weight, these are all just sort of luxury items, but this is an inside liner, which will increase your sleeping temperature, I don't know, 5 to 10 degrees. Um, on average, uh, but it does add probably about a pound to your overall weight. Um, so there's your sleeping pads, and you obviously need some compression sacks for your uh, mattresses and also for your sleeping bag. So that's your sort of sleeping equipment, and then we'll move on here to the backpack and storage. You need a large um, backpack, uh, basically that'll cover, that will um, hold all of your gear. This is the Denali Pro. Um, by Gregory. It's a great backpack. It's got a detachable top. And then a few things that you'll need to your pack I've already rigged. Okay. You'll need some sort of reinforced um, backpack leash that will be tied into your rope at all times. Um, I've just reinforced this with some 3-4 millimeter cord. And then I've got basically a leash. You need 3 or 4 feet enough to get around you and clip into your rope. So I've already built that into my system. And then you can just clip it uh, out of your way when you don't need it. That's the backpack leash. I've also already pre-set up a sled pool, which is one inch webbing. Um, this will be able to hook into your sled. Basically it fits right around the bottom part of your waist belt. Most backpacks will have something to slide through here to set up a, a pool system. So that's my pack. Um, Denali Pro, like I said, with your pack leash and your sled. Uh, webbing set up already. Okay, then you're going to need some stuff sacks for all your general gear like toiletries, uh, sunscreens, some of your kitchen equipment. We've got these laid out here for various things fit to your need. You're going to need some um, trash bags or something to stash your um, supplies in for caches. You just got some large compactor trash bags here. Okay, then you're also going to need, starting here, you're going to need some sort of fairly lightweight, if you can, um, carry bag for your sled to put gear in. This is just a lightweight, large duffel made by EMS. You ought to put your gear in here. Some people will use the North Face um, duffels, which are a little bit heavier. This should be able to conform to the, to the shape of the sled. We can tie this down. So this will be for our caches and for pulling in our sled. Then everyone's going to need some sort of snowshoe and or ski system. We're going to snowshoe. Um, these are the Denali MSR, actually Revo Ascents. Um, and I've tied on a couple leashes here. So you can clip easily if you fall into a crevasse and get these out of your way. I just tied on some little tiny straps there. So that's just a basic snowshoe. Another thing I'll mention with the snowshoes is when you're on steep terrain, it's nice to have these heel bars um, that fold up and down. So your boot will rest and you won't be at such a, 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 a straining angle. So these are a nice feature uh, if you don't have those, um, which come on the uh, Revo Ascents. Okay, and also other snowshoes. Then you need your sort of multi-purpose um, hiking poles. These are collapsible. These are black diamond. They also have their snow baskets on these. Um, and I like to keep uh, duct tape um, easily reachable on my um, hiking poles. So I've added some extra duct tape there. Okay, on to some of the other personal gear. Um, a helmet, some people, this is controversial, some people won't take a helmet. Um, it's, it is a little extra weight, but there are some spots on Denali where, especially in the late afternoon as the sun comes out, some loose rock fall, especially I think around Windy Corner and a few of the other spots. So I will probably take, uh, I'm gonna take this black diamond helmet. It's maybe a pound, not that heavy. Then you need a general, um, Mountaineering ice axe with a cord. Some people will use webbing or other leashes here. This 
This is just a six millimeter cord tied to my ice axe, which is tied to my harness. I've also duct taped some foam here because when you're hiking, this gets really cold and cold temperatures, it'll freeze your hands. So basically got an insulating foam pad with some duct tape, um, which should, should do the trick. Then you need a generalized mountaineering harness. You need to have something that has leg loops that can untie, okay? You want something that can release. These will come off, so if I need to put it over all my gear with my clothes already on, if it's too tight, the leg loops are adjustable and they can be undone completely, which is important. They also make some lighter weight harnesses like the Black Diamond Momentum, which is much less um, bulky. This will be comfortable for, you know, it's a little bit heavier, but it's a pretty comfortable harness. I've got a couple of locking beaners already in place there. So you need an adjustable um, leg loop, something lightweight, just for general mountaineering. Okay, I think this is the, uh, I think this is the Black Diamond Momentum. All right, so there's your harness, your ice axe. Now, moving on to some other gear that you will need. Okay, um, eight to 10 harnesses. I mean harnesses, these are eight to 10 carabiners. These are the Black Diamond Neutrinos, super lightweight, wire gate. Um, I've got like nine or 10 of these on top of a few extra beaners. These will be used for rigging your sled, using stuff on your pack, creating anchors for a crevasse rescue. So I've got like nine Neutrino Black Diamond um, carabiners. Other personal gear. Here I've already set up a system. I've got two ascenders. Okay, left and right. Most places would only recommend one. Um, I'll probably, I may end up changing this up and only taking one ascender, but I've basically already got a system set up here, okay, with locking beaners, attachment for your harness, um, and two locking beaners there. So this would just be um, already pre made up leash for my ascenders. You're going to need three to five locking beaners for your sleds and various things. I've got a few extras here for the locking beaners. All right. And then um, we'll go over the cord here in a minute. Also some sun protection. So basically you've got a bandana if needed. You can also use this for cooking. I've got a pair of glacier goggles, which are important, with a protective case. Okay. Um, you want good UV protection because it's super bright. You don't want to go snow blonde there. If these happen to break, I can also use a backup ski goggle. I'll also use these for summit day with its own protective case. All right, so some sun goggle, ski goggles and some sunglasses. So some other sun protection and toiletries, basically some SPF 50, anything above 30. This is two ounce. I can clip this on or I'll probably tie a little cord. I can clip this to my waist. Just make sure any kind of liquid sunscreen can freeze solid on you on summit day so be careful with that it may need to be in your pack or in your pocket or on your inside jacket pocket these will freeze up and you won't be able to use it and i've also got some roll on so if you have your ulti mitts on and it's hard to you know if it's super cold you don't want to be getting out cold wet sunscreen so you can just roll this on this is an spf 70 you can roll it onto your face nose lips um, and then i've also got some spf lip balm keep those in your pocket as well and a little extra just roll on sunscreen. So that should do it for sunscreen. Um, then some basic hand sanitizer, camp hygiene. Can't stress the importance enough of camp hygiene. You do not want to get sick after you plan this expedition, um, trying to, trying to uh, keep clean. Some hand sanitizer, some wet ones for your, you know, every fifth day shower in the tent. Also for just wiping stuff down. I like to take a really lightweight sponge, so if anything in your tent gets wet or around the kitchen, you can mop that up um, pretty quickly with just a little basic sponge. Then obviously you're like some sort of tooth, toothpaste and toothbrush. Okay, uh, so that does it sort of for your sun, some of your basic inside the tent hygiene stuff. Okay, last I want to go over just some uh, personal food and equipment and then some of the group gear that you may need. Okay, so everyone should have at least two um, your bottles with insulators okay keep it from freezing i'm also going to take a thermos for summit day and also for uh, keeping warm liquids so i've got two one liter bottles and then also a thermos which is about a liter everyone should have you know a sealed cup would be nice a little bit of slightly insulated 
a spoon. I've also got a sealed bowl that's not here, but basically you need something to eat with a sealed coffee mug, fork, and spoon. Now, we're going to have all of our group food and snacks already in Alaska, but I like to bring, I don't know, to me, water gets old after a while, so I've got some G2 Gatorade powders just to kind of make it down, go down a little easier. And then for those luxury days, I got my own sort of Starbucks coffee. Okay, just some basic stuff. Got two lighters. If you need to carry some lighters, got a good sharp pocket knife, which also clips into your harness if need be. Okay. Then I've got basically earplugs and blinders. Okay, for sleeping. These, uh, especially if it's if it's mostly light outside, it just sort of helps seal in the darkness. And some earplugs if your tent mate snores. Um, some other things, I'll also have an altimeter watch, um, which I don't have out here. I'll also display the altitude, time, barometric pressure, and all those things, um, which will be useful. And then everyone should have a basic emergency kit and also med kit. I like something like this, which is well labeled. We'll have all our high altitude meds um, and some antibiotics, Zofran, certain things for GI, a few antibiotics, people get sick, like Cipro. Um, but we also have dexamethasone, hopefully we won't need, some acetazolamide, we'll have some nifedipine for pulmonary edema, and all of your high altitude medications, as well as some Imodium, Pepto-Bismol, and some stuff for the stomach. Okay, that's all labeled and in a nice little compact pack. Then we'll have sort of our basic um, uh, med kit as well, which should have some bandages, some suture stuff, um, any kind of little basic needs that we may have, safety pins, um, needles, syringes, stuff like that, lidocaine. Okay, so that's just your basic kit. I'm also going to take a little sat monitor um, just to kind of keep an eye on everybody, make sure everybody can see if there's a big change in our oxygenation, heart rates, things like that. It's a added bonus. Okay, so now for the group gear, um, which I don't have all of our group gear here, but I've got most of it. We've got two international um, whisper lights with uh, repair kits. Okay, you should know how to use these stoves, how to break them down, how to oil them. Everything that uh, you need to repair seals, O-rings, take these apart, use them, uh, make sure you understand them. Um, this is your lifeline. Here's our little repair kit. It's got extra oil, seals, O-rings, everything we need here. And then just a basic whisper light stove. Okay, and we'll get all of our fuel on the mountain. We've got, I've got one 30 mil bottle and one 22 mil bottle. These also come, I'm going to take a little protector case, okay, Ziploc for our pumps. We've got two pumps. These are the Arctic pumps. Uh, basically just use the general pumps, but I've got one extra Arctic pump. So I'll have three pumps for the mountain, two stoves. Also some hand warmers and foot warmers, five or six pairs of those, okay. This is all of our stove equipment. Um, Moving on, you need one heavy duty tent. This is the, the Black Diamond Bomb Shelter. Um, so we're gonna use one tent for two people. We got a climbing rope. This is a 60 meter, it's a 9.4, fairly lightweight, um, dry treated uh, mountaineering rope. And then I've got extra ice pickets here for some of our other team members, but everyone should have at least two. Two ice pickets for securing anchors. Then you'll need a fairly heavy duty Shovel, every member on the team should have a shovel. Um, we're also gonna pick up a heavy spaded shovel for that hard ice on the upper mountain um, when we get to Alaska. We've also got a couple of different saws. This one's got a built-in snow saw, okay? One shovel per person, and then uh, a couple of snow saws. All right. And then I've also got a couple of probes for probing camp. I'll probably just, I'll take one, which have a couple between four members. It's just a long probe, just like for avalanche travel. Okay. Then I've got also some other group gear I've got is I'm taking slings for everybody. So we've got some 240 meter and 120, all right, sorry, um, 240 centimeters, 120 centimeters, and some 60 centimeter um, slings, lightweight, easy to make anchors with. That's for our team of four. I've got some repair tape for basic rips. Uh, it's supposed to be a little bit better than duct tape. 
um, for any problems with your tent or any of your down jackets or anything like that. I've got a small roll. Then every member on the team should have two pulleys. You want these to be fairly lightweight. I've got uh, a couple rescue pulleys here, as well as one ice screw per member um, for any kind of hard ice or maybe getting out of crevasse or setting anchors along fixed lines. We've got four ice screws. And then we have some group cooking pots. We've got two pots here, one five liter, one three liter, fits inside of each other. Some other cooking supplies. We've also got another five liter pot coming and a skillet and then also all of your cooking ware, which I'm not bringing, but you need to think about. Then I've got a um, filter for our fuel bottles. That way we can pour gasoline into our cans without spilling it all over the place. And I've got a dipping cup for our water. Okay, so you can um, cook with it. It's got a nice handle. All right, other things that we may take is, is a steri pin just to make sure we sterilize our water. I think staying healthy is a big part of being on the mountain. This is just a basic um, Freedom Steri pin. 30 seconds, and it basically purifies a half a liter of water. That just has a little backup resource. I've also got some sort of rescue chlorine dioxide tablets if we needed it. Okay, that's there. Some extra Ziploc bags for any other compartmentalization or cooking. And then I've got some of the essentials here. I've got a sat foam with a solar charger for any of our electronics. Um, and then uh, one sat phone. And then I've got our map and traditional compass. Um, so that's pretty much most of the group gear. And then, you know, you gotta take your little wild med banner, of course. And any kind of momentum, things like that. So I've got a picture I take to all the summits um, that I'll carry up. Hopefully we'll make it to the top. Um, that should do it for most of the group gear. Um, again, uh, it all depends on weight. You can switch and, check and uh, match this stuff up. Sort of some things are um, needed, some things are more luxury items. So you just kind of got to make up your mind on what you want to take. This sort of covers sort of most of the group gear, most of your personal gear. So I hope that's been useful for you guys. Um, check back in, we'll have some more videos along the way.